Hi right, everybody, this is Matt. Uh, I'm going to tell you how you can spend your offline um, Bitcoins, essentially doing an offline transaction, meaning you don't have to have your, your private key ever visible by the uh, or seen by a computer that has access to the outside world. So for this example, I have two computers, and my left one is going to be my offline computer. And I've taken out the hard drive, and I'm booting off a Ubuntu CD-ROM, a live CD. So anything that happens here can't be saved, theoretically. Um, hopefully this will focus a little better. In the, there we go. Uh, the next thing I did is I, uh, well, so first of all, the idea of, of an offline transaction is you use your online computer, this is my online computer, to generate a transaction which simply says this address pays this address this much money and that also brings along some information which is where did the first address get its money from, previous transactions that haven't been referenced yet. So all that needs to be known. Uh, it gets that information and then most of the tutorials I see online say that you put that on, you know, in a text file, copy and paste it into a file, save it to a USB drive, take your USB drive, your key to the other computer, and then sign it somehow with a program on the on this computer here. It makes a new file, which is essentially the same transaction, but uh, it is signed, which means your private key is used here. And then you take that signed transaction, save it to your USB drive, and then move it back over to your online computer where you can then release it onto the Bitcoin network and out you go. Uh, that works. And there's no reason why you can't do that. <clears throat> Me, though, I'm a little paranoid uh, in that, you know, why can't a virus get on the USB drive on the first step, make its way over to your other computer, somehow see your private key or anything else that's here, and save it to your USB drive, and then when it comes back to here, it'll, you know, send that information back to the rest of the world. It's possible. Is it likely? Probably not. But you know what? The stakes are going up now with the Bitcoin, the value of it being what it is. So, you know, who knows? <laughs> I, am I, I am a little more concerned. So I wanted a better way of communicating uh, between two computers than USB. I hear that there's light codes or, you know, OCR and that kind of stuff happening um, with web cameras, but I chose a, a more basic method. What I did is I already had two cables that were essentially, I'll bring one out here, USB, it's plugged in the back actually, how about this one over here, you can see the USB here and it plugs into a long cable that turns into a serial port, so a USB to serial port, I have two of them, and then in the middle I have a null modem adapter, and that allows me, it actually switches it so the send on one side goes to the receive of the other and vice versa. This is not easy to do with one hand, let me see if I can put it back together, hold on a minute. Sorry about that. They are now back together. Okay, so I'm going to be using serial transmission to send data back and forth, which is pretty safe. So in order to do that easily, I'm sure with Linux you can do a command line utility, but I figured why not just use a, a simple GUI interface. So here's what we do. Uh, on the, so right now this computer will be online. The antenna light is on. We are online. You can see the wireless icon up there. So uh, right now it's not an offline computer, but that's okay. First thing I'm going to do is install the serial software. I'm going to go to, I'm going to launch Ubuntu software, which is this icon over here, Ubuntu Software Center, which brings this up. And I'm going to go inside, I'm going to go to Edit, Software Sources, and I'm going to check mark the one that says Universe. Do you see that one second one down? Uh, it already, um, it's check marked now because I've already done this to save time, but it wasn't before. You check mark that and you say close. And then, once you now have access to that repo, you can do a search for GTK term in the search box, which I've already done, and here it comes, and all you'll do, there'll be an install button there. It says remove now because it's already installed, and that installs GK, G, GTK, term, uh, GTK term, excuse me, and it puts the icon down here, serial port terminal. I'm going to click on that. Oh, you know what? You have to be run, run it uh, as a... How do I get out of here? Forgot this. It says cannot and is permission denied. Uh, so the problem there is I you sorry it has to be a little there might be an easier way to do this. I'm just gonna go to terminal here and then just launch it from a terminal. Oh, it's frustrating. Go up to the main button here, go to terminal. And I'm going to say sudo, which means run as administrator, essentially. GTK term, same name. Now we have privileges, and we're good to go. All right, so uh, this side is taking... Oh, the other thing is let's, let's uh, grab the port. 
I'm going to grab the last one, which is the USB one. See that down? That's mine, and I'll leave everything else default. That's all you got to do there. All right, other computer. Um, here's the address, on, by the way, I'm sending from and to. <clears throat> and I use something called uh, Putty. And you can download look Google Putty, P-U-T-T-Y, and install for Windows, if that's what you're using. And I'm going to use the serial console. And I already know ahead of time that it's COM7 by looking in my device manager to see what port had been assigned. And I'm also going to go to terminal and check mark the implicit carriage return. And this is so that when you hit enter on one side, it, it actually does a carriage return on the other and goes to a new line. It's just a little uh, uh, compatibility thing. Now, whatever I type on this keyboard will show up in the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my hand here on, a, on the letter H, let's say. Move over to the screen. Now I'm going to type H, 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 and I'll hit enter. Oh, this one doesn't hit enter, so I got to go to configuration. Uh, carriage return, line feed auto. I guess that's what I want. I'll click on that now if I hit enter. There it goes. So now I get carriage return, which you don't really, not a big deal. Okay, so now I have a way to send data back and forth. In fact, let's test the other side. I'll hit some letters. Sure enough, they go there. I'll hit enter. Enter. So look, we now have a way to communicate over a cable. It's a lot harder for a virus to go over. All right, let's get down to work. Uh, the next thing we got to do, first of all, before what, while we are still online, is bring up Firefox. Sorry about the focus. And we're going to go to offline wallet, please focus, dot .appspot .com. And then I'm going to click on the sign transaction. That's the second one over. And what it does is it makes you download a zip file, which is OK. I'll say OK. And I've already downloaded it once. And all you do is you unzip it somewhere. And I unzipped everything into the desktop. So what I'll do now is open the desktop version of this. I don't need the software center anymore. It's a lot more challenging to do this with a camera in front of you, I'm noticing. I don't need this. Don't need this terminal anymore. This is my private key. I've pre-typed in my private key, so I don't have to, you don't have to wait for me on that. Um, let's see, what am I looking for? I am looking for the desktop, the files. So go to files. On my desktop is where I extracted that zip file. And there's the signed transaction. So I'm going to get my, I'm going to drag it on top. And now we're in signed transaction mode. And then, uh, but it's not ready to go yet. So now we're over here on the live screen. So you've also, uh, on the live computer, online I should say, you go to office, online wall, offline wallet.appspot.com. And here's where you say create transaction online. You say cold storage and uh, recipient address. I pre-type these in. This is my old address where I'm going from. I'm going to control C that. Paste it in here. And then I'm going to bring in where am I sending it to. Here's a new address. Feel free. I'll put it in my video as a tip in case you guys want to give me a tip for this. I've had to remake this video about eight times. Um, how much money are we sending? Now, it would have been nice if it sort of auto-loaded how much money was in there, but I, and I forget. I think it's, it's a tiny amount. So let's go to blockchain info just to figure that out. Blockchain. And I'm going to type in my public address. No big deal. Not private. And a grand total of 0 0.001 Bitcoin. All right, good enough. Go back over here. I'm going to put, I'm going to transfer point. So this is how much I have. I'm going to give that much plus a transaction fee. So it's up to you to make sure that these balances match. And remember, so uh, the fees down below and what you're sending is above. Um, I'm going to create the transaction. And it's nice because it gives you a little, uh, are you sure? Like, here's what we're doing. Or oh, actually, I, I think that comes next. It filled in this block with a whole bunch of information. I'm going to double click it, or triple I guess, right click it and say copy. And then through the magic of serial transmission, I'll bring up my putty and I will paste. Oops, I think I did it twice. Because I'm used to seeing the output happen. Back over here. Yeah, <laughs> it's hard to see. I'm going to hit enter and paste one more time on the other side so I can see 
where it starts and ends, so I don't do this. There we go. All right, there's, there's our transaction. So I'm gonna highlight it all. So again, you could you don't have to use serial. You can just save it in a text file and copy it and whatever. Now I'm going to paste it into here. Okay, it was working all along. And now the private key. Now this is where you take it from your offline wallet. This is where things get sensitive now. I already typed it in on my uh, page here. Come on, Control C. Holding your camera in one hand doesn't help. Now I'm going to paste that in there and that uses that to, to sign it. I'm going to hit sign and then it says here's what's going on. You're going to send point oh oh nine from your cold storage to the Bitcoin address so you can check that. So this is a great time to check and make sure everything is correct. I'm going to say okay. This is what the other method didn't have. Now here's our signed transaction. Now I can select all, control C, Go back to this terminal. I'm going to hit enter a couple times and then I'm going to say paste. And watch what happens. It's going to show up. Boom. All right, so now we're done. We're almost there. All I got to do now is select all this. Just that part that came in up to the last zero there. And I'm going to, I think it's selected automatically. And then you go to blockchain.info, push transaction, push TX. And then you can, there's a nice decode tool. I'm going to click on that first. This is where you get to just see what would happen if you were to submit. I'm going to paste everything in there. Look at that. Work like a dream. And you can actually look in here. And the most important part is to look at the output. You see how it says out there, right there, out? It sends to this address, uh, 3, 3GK. Well, I know that's the right one. That's really the most important part. So if a virus is going to screw you over, this is where it would. That looks good to me. I'm going to click backwards and actually go to the the regular page where you actually submit it. So I'm going to paste it in here now that I know everything's cool. And I'll hit submit. Boy, that took a little longer. Maybe you'll be faster with one hand. Now let's take a look at this address where I sent it on blockchain and see if we at least have a transaction pending there. That's not it. Blockchain. Paste it down here. Sure enough, there's a transaction. There's my 0 .009. So we're all good to go. So, sorry about that one delay with the copy paste thing. That was just me not, you know, looking through the camera and not really seeing what was going on. But uh, anyway, so you don't have to use this. You can use a USB drive. Uh, it doesn't have to be this complicated. But this is only, uh, I don't know, the two cables in this probably are 15 bucks all together. If you so, if it's worth it to you, give it a shot. Uh, hopefully this helps you guys, and uh, feel free to tip me if you want. Um, I'll see you next time.